Okay. okay. Hi, we want to welcome you to Learning Creative Learning. I'm Mitch Resnick. I'm Natalie Rusk. I'm Philip Schmidt. And we're looking forward to working together with you over the next few months on Learning Creative Learning. We thought we'd start here outside the Media Lab and then walk you through and invite you in. We thought it'd be good to start with the Media Lab because a lot of the ideas in Learning Creative Learning were inspired by the work at the Media Lab. Uh, the Media Lab is a place where people are constantly you know, developing creative new technologies and exploring how people can use technologies to express themselves new ways and understand the world in new ways. So let's go inside. Actually, the Media Lab is part of the School of Architecture and Planning. I always like that. It's not part of a School of Engineering but School of Architecture and Planning, because I think the way we want to think about this is we want to think about how we sort of rebuild the world and how people think about how people experience the world, sort of the way architects do. Right as you come in, you start to see Media Lab projects right away. Uh, this structure here was created by uh, Neary Oxman's research group, the Mediated Matter Group. And the structure was created by thousands of silkworms. And it fits with, in Neary's group, they're looking at the intersection between the biological world and the digital world of how we can be inspired by the organic world as we develop new technologies. And as I understand it, they first looked at how silkworms build things, and then they used a CNC machine to build the basic structure and then let thousands of silkworms here. And every day when we walked in, we could see them on this structure. And there was a little canopy around so that you wouldn't get silkworms on you when you walk by. I mean, some were trying to get away, usually <laughs> along, the, along the, the lines. I mean, for me, one thing that connects this with the Media Lab spirit and learning creative learning is the way it mixes together art, design, science, and technology. And I think a lot of times the most creative experiences bring together all those fields and cut across the different disciplines. That's what we try to do in the Media Lab, and it's one of the things we'll be talking about in learning creative learning. Now, again, here it's very much about connecting with the physical world and real things like silkworms. You know, when the Media Lab first started, it was a lot about just the you know, media on screen. So 30 years ago when the lab started, it was amazing just to see graphics and photographs and video on the same screen. Of course, that became commonplace pretty quickly. So the Media Lab then shifted to think more about how the digital world interacts with the physical world. And that's a big theme around the lab now is how we can connect the digital and the physical. Down here we have a whole lab full of, you know, <laughs> here's some of our newest graduate students. They get younger every year. So here's our machine shop and they focus on new types of personal fabrication. Uh, also some dangerous machines, authorized access only. Let's head on in. So there's a wide range of machines here. Uh, like there's a water jet cutter that sort of can cut through all sorts of different things and you can write programs to describe exactly you know, how you want to form the things that you're cutting through. An example of the digital and physical coming together. Now, of course, this is very high-end equipment. I think one thing we see that this type of equipment is becoming more accessible and more affordable uh, all of the time. I think that's a big part of what the maker movement is about, is taking some of these types of uh, capabilities that used to only be at places like the Media Lab, and now everyone can get access to be able to uh, you know, mold their own world through do-it-yourself personal fabrication. So early on, the whole Fab Lab concept with Neil Gershenfeld's group started making personal fabrication more available at sites around the world. And, and in a way, that's actually a nice um, similarity to our course, right? Like he had this equipment here and he decided that more people should have access to yeah. it. And in the same way, we're looking at reflecting on kind of the learning principles inside the Media Lab and hoping to open that up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think the best way to get a sense of the Media Lab is to look in some of the labs. So let's go upstairs and look at some of the uh, different research groups. running to the elevator. <laughs> so the Media Lab has like a couple dozen research groups um, and they're scattered through the building and is, you know, oops. 
you can hit the elevators, don't know where you want to go. We have to remember to push the buttons. I forgot about that. So we're going up to the fourth floor where my research group is. Um, I'll get a sense of, of the lab. Thank you. One thing you notice around the building is that there's glass everywhere. Um, so I think we want to make sure that people can see what else is going on. That the building was really designed for collaboration to have people be able to see what other groups are doing. It's like we can look at on one group here. But this is the area where Neri Oxman's Mediated Matter group is in here, where they worked on the Silkworm project. But right next to our group is Todd Macover's uh, Opera of the Future group, where they think of new ways to use technology for forms of musical expression to allow everybody to express themselves musically. And I think the idea is to make sure that different groups bump up against each other so that ideas can cross-fertilize from one group to another. And part of our idea is taking some of these kinds of activities where people are designing different projects in different areas like music and in designing with 3D printers and matter, and then making that more available for young people in other places, like through the Clubhouse project we'll talk about, but also, as Philip said, through the learning creative learning with all of you making these ideas available. Like you can see a robot has done a drawing here, and then there's music that people are making through software and physical devices, and those are the kinds of activities we also make available and engage young people in designing. Okay, let's head over to where our research group is, uh, just down the hall. And this is a big part of the Media Lab ecosystem here as well, right? The third floor atrium where students hang out. And actually, we know those guys down there. <laughs> and they play ping pong and they work on their projects. And yeah, and I think that form of informal interaction is a big part of the learning process. You're too often when people think about education and learning, they think about sitting in classrooms. But for us, a big part of the learning process is informal interaction where people are sharing ideas, working together. So we, you know, here at the lab, we try to provide as many ways as possible for people to informally uh, see what, it, what others are doing, work together on projects. Yeah, so, and it seems like the the projects and the play are not that separate. Like that ping pong table, often it, it has a whole bunch of sensors underneath, and there's often a video that reacts to the ping pong ball coming down. So, and even in the classes, like you said, there's, it's very project-based. So actually, here's our lab. It's the Lego Learning Lab, and our research group is the Lifelong Kindergarten Group. And we call it the Lifelong Kindergarten Group because we've been inspired by the way children learn in kindergarten where they're you know, constantly designing and creating things in collaboration with one another, whether they're building towers with blocks or pictures with finger paint. And we want to keep that same spirit alive for learners of all ages. Uh, here's one of the, uh, this sort of represents one of the projects from our group, the Scratch Software Project that you'll get a chance to try as part of this course. The mascot from Scratch is the Scratch Cat. Uh, so uh, we, created this uh, scratch cat out of Lego bricks, because we also do a lot with Lego and getting kids building in the world. Some of the graduate students in the group made a 3D model, and then the Lego company was nice enough to make uh, the physical version of the cat based on our 3D model. So let's walk inside our lab area. So we can see examples of a few other projects from the group. Some of the graduate students in our group uh, Jay Silver and Eric Rosenbaum developed the Makey Makey board that lets you turn anything into a musical instrument. Over here we have some examples from our work with the Lego company where we started working with them more than 25 years ago on what led to the robotics kits of Lego Mindstorms. Here was the very first programmable Lego brick where we put a computer inside of a Lego brick that was from around 1990. And then we made some prototypes that we tested out in schools. And finally, the Lego company came out with a product of Lego Mindstorms in 1998. There have been successive generations over the last 15 years. And here's where you know, people in our group are, you know, there's a common area where they can work together on projects or work on their laptops. <laughs> hey, Shristi. <laughs> It's risky to be helping out with the learning creative learning course. 
So let's head on into my office, which is where we'll be doing a lot of the video for the Learning Creative Learning. This is going to be our command central for the online course. So we look forward to talking with you from here over the next few weeks uh, and sharing ideas and looking forward to hearing from you as we you know, you know, work together on learning creative learning.